Good evening all and a very warm welcome to the Grassroots Weekender Show. Hope everyone's keeping well out there and I hope you're having a fine time. It's been absolutely glorious this morning out and about at the North Liverpool JFL. Well done once again to all the committee, all the referees and all the parents and spectators who actually all adhered to respect. Well they did do because I had to get off to do a couple of shows because unfortunately I'm back in work tomorrow so um, I won't be out and about at grassroots football so I'll have to record the show and obviously I'll have more time to watch Liverpool versus Manchester United and just hope that we can go through to another semi-finals. Wow, wow. Wouldn't that be lovely if you're a Liverpool fan? That is so. Um, anyway, fantastic. Well done to everyone and the kids as well. But it was warm, you could see kids were getting... You can see by the faces, bright red, they're running around, they're doing too much. Some of the kids do get a cob on when they're taking off. Um, and sometimes you go over your time or under your time when you're doing substitutes. You're, you're having a guessing game, you shout at the referee all the time. You don't want to affect the referee. You try and concentrate on getting the kids in the mood. Now, you as coaches and managers understand where we're coming from here. Sometimes you can go over or under and you try and you think you look and you, you've not pleasure. Ple Rest your time there. So it can happen, it really can. You try and give all the kids equal time, you try your best to make sure everyone is in the mood, got good attitudes, and we we'll talk about attitudes very, very shortly indeed. Um, and you do your subs, your team, and if you're like me as a coach or a manager, you do your team the night before and you put them all down, and then suddenly someone doesn't turn up and it all changes, doesn't it? You know, the reflection of how you had it all portrayed. But great, well done to Crosby Stewart. We, I thought we had a great game today. It was fantastic. Played in a friendly manner. Kids got on great. They've done very, very well, the kids on both sides. And if there's a winner, there's a winner. If not, the kids don't realise it's about development and this is what we want in grassroots football. Pure development. And losing games doesn't do them any harm whatsoever. Or... Uh, well, it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, it's a 40 minute game and you try and get everything in perspective and you try and encourage the kids to play and things change, things happen, kids get tired and kids get sick as well and you have to put up with that as well, you know, it's hard, it really is hard for managers and coaches and then you have to answer parents with different questions, different things that happen and just an appeal there as well, we were out at North Liverpool GFL and one of the kids, our kids, lost his black bear house Jacket left it on the sideline on 1C, pitch 1C between 1C and 1D on the first pitches. So if anyone's picked that up, could you hand it in to Geoffrey Humble, please? Yeah, the kid was a little bit upset and unfortunately things do go miss. We know that every week kids leave the water bottles, kids leave the balls, kids leave the coats, their bags. You name it, they all leave it all the time and we can't find it. How they go missing, I really, really don't know. Well, kids are kids, <clears throat> and not everyone has got individual coats. Some of them, unfortunately, are the same. <clears throat> I forgot my tea bags today, and I've got no water, <clears throat> so I'm getting a little bit thirsty, and I just need a cup, you know, not hot water, I couldn't do that. <clears throat> anyway, it's absolutely fantastic to go to a league and enjoy football, kids playing football, and especially when the sun's shining. You know, it's finally come, and the weather is hotting up, I was pretty warm there today as well, my jacket was off. Um, and I just hope that everyone enjoyed themselves and looking at that, I think they did. Um, so well done to all our kids, you know what I mean, for having a go. And um, when they all get home, their attitudes I know will change. But when you're looking at kids on a football pitch, and it probably not just our kids, managers, coaches will tell you the same things happen when the substitutes come on and you you know, and you could be losing and then the kids' attitudes changed instead of... It's like the professionals' attitudes do change, don't they? They back off and it, 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 it takes the complexion of the game right out if kids are starting to have a bad attitude. So I want to work all the time on attitudes for the kids. We talked about this not so long ago and I believe it's part of the development attitudes. We need to put that in, not just on the coaching side of things. Kids kicking a ball, kids scoring goals, kids great tackles, it's attitudes and how they portray themselves on a field of play and off the field of play as well. Because 
good attitudes do get noticed and not as much as the bad attitudes because everyone notices that as well if kids have got bad at attitudes and I do, I pick up on it with all kids, I see it there, um, mums and dads, they all try their best but we, we put in our group and we ask them to try and work on attitudes before and after a game so on and off the field of play because you still have to instill good attitudes the kids to the kids before a match and that's what we want it was a great game today whether you liked it or not whether you lose whether you draw it was and you know fair result for us would have been a draw you know i wouldn't have said we should have held on to a win but cross with stewart they just battled back in a great little outfit i enjoyed the game good coaches and that's what it's all about as well friendliness and you could hear the friendliness with the parents as well you know it, it's nice we all want to win but unfortunately you can't win all the time you know and if you concede silly goals what happens they go in but sometimes the kids are trying their best and they don't mean those goals to go in they just need to understand that winning is not everything and it's good because some teams you win week in week out and then they suddenly get beat i've seen what happens and it destroys the kids you know especially if it goes to penalties in a cup final or a, a playoff wow You've seen them, the kids are distraught, it really does affect them. So losing games, they do get used to that as well. And, you know, that is what a coach and a manager should be portraying. A lot of attitudes within the system itself, and I think coaches should bring that in. And I see loads of kids, great kids, all across my Stewart, they were all fantastic, all shaking hands, but one or two wouldn't shake hands. And I think that is bad attitude, no matter what you say to them. Kids get it in the head, I'm not shaking hands because they're upset because they lost well it doesn't mean the end of the world and that we ask our parents if they can work on them as well as well as the coaches we, we try our best myself and so on training and before a match and try and get the attitudes right if it's not right you know the kid is not going to perform so a good attitude helps performance performance all around all around it makes it different they enjoy themselves they come back off and they're not really bothered about losing they really aren't and to me i just think today was one of those days where you're winning then you're losing and it you know hats off to crosby stewart as i say great enjoyed it and i enjoyed the football and when we was talking to sophie at the end we did we thought it was a great game and the referee come to me and said that was a cracking game that you know it should have been closer that's that's it but it wasn't and we all know how football goes, but there's always next time, and the kids will all forgotten about that next week. But hopefully, hopefully, the parents don't go on about it and they forget about it as well. Talk to the kids, okay, don't worry. You know, I always say if, if, if the kids aren't happy there and they want to go to another team, brilliant, they can go to another team. We'll get it all sorted. And you know, if, if you give one child less minutes, then we'll make up for it. The following week, we'll know that if they're upset over that, that's what we'll do. And obviously, you want to keep all the kids happy within the team. So simple, isn't it? So simple. Anyway, yes, we enjoyed it. And well done to other teams all around as well. Done to Bob, Connor, uh, Rachel, um, everyone who was involved in there, who, who was on the committee. I, I just think it was brilliant for everyone to get involved. Yeah, I really, really do, honestly. Um, and Peter, Peter was there as well, got to give him a mention. I think you give him all a mention, I'm not too sure. But if it happens, I'm no doubt I'll get pulled next week anyway. Well, we are Cheltenham and, and obviously Aintree's coming up, Easter's coming up, so everything's flying. Holidays are coming up, everyone is oh, 100 mile an hour. But it's all about grassroots football, it's all about this, and it's all about respect. And we may be filming our advert on Wednesday evening. Um, because it's portraying respect as well as our referees and our, everyone, all the kids were great with the referee. All the decisions, absolutely fantastic. Can't thank him enough. And, and they're only trying their best as well. And there was no one having a go at the referee. Brilliant. Music to my ears. And that was great from the sidelines to the referee as well. The referee just got on and it wasn't a murmur too. Wasn't a murmur, honestly. And I just thought it was absolutely fantastic. Everyone working together and letting the kids enjoy the game. The only thing I've, I've got as well, and, and I laugh with our parents, our kids pick the time to want to go to the toilet, 
and we can only apologise to teams because they tend to pick a time that they have to go. So we'll have to say to our parents, no drinks an hour before a match. Just let them sip the water when they come on that pitch or off that pitch and that will keep them from wanting to go to the toilet. Why? I really, really don't know. Oh, apologies again, once again to the coaches, but we can't control that, unfortunately. If the kids want to go, they have to go. We can't do a thing about it. Um, and I don't know why it happens to us and what these kids are doing, but anyway, mums and dads, please, let's get this sorted once and for all. Makes a difference, you know. Anyway, um, Jeff, absolutely fantastic. Enjoying yourself today. Sophie enjoyed herself. And she went out to referee after that one as well. She really did. It was great to hear, great to see. And we were all over that. And she stays, see, she's not just coaching the team as well. She stays there and does some refereeing and throughout the day. And, you know, seeing more teams, more kids. I think it's brilliant. And it's fantastic that she's an all-rounder and getting used to development in grassroots football. So she needs the support as well from our parents, from the kids, and she needs the respect. And that is a major, major factor for all coaches, managers on the sidelines who are trying their very, very best to make a difference within the game. They're just trying to bring the kids through, develop the kids with good attitudes. And we want to put that in brackets, DXTL, good attitudes. That is a main talking point. And if you've got anything that you'd like to say or get in touch with me, malatontextaline.com, add me as a friend on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all the social network sites. And let's have a little chat. Or you want to come into the office, have a little chat. You want to come onto the podcast, let's have a chat. Let's get together, let's wear together and let's do things together. And we can all make a difference within grassroots football, especially for the kids and the referees as well. That's what it's all about. So note down in your notebook, 6th of April, Respect Awareness Weekend. So it goes through, it could be the 6th, 7th and the 8th. It depends if there's a Monday night game, then the referees, the PGMOL, the play, Premier Game match officials, the Premier League referees basically, will be wearing our T-shirts with the officials during their warm-ups to portray the message of respect. No ref, no game. This is what we want and we want or we'd love and we'd like to ask every club, every team, get involved with this, do something different, do something that'll make a difference within the league, within your team, to support our referees. And under sevens, eights, I don't think it's anything about that at the moment, because I think they're okay with decisions. Um, but it can happen, we all know that. So we need to make sure that that referee is safe when they go onto the field of play, they're on their own. They're taking on all the parents, all the kids, and the coaches and managers as well in some cases. So we need to respect them, need to look after them, and need to work together with them. Because if we don't have a referee, we don't have a game, basically. And it's lovely to see the referees getting involved as well with the kids. And we've got one or two referees now. You might know this or hear of it. Just checking that my sound clouds on. I have to put a show on there. I forgot that yesterday. Apologies to all the SoundCloud listeners. It didn't go on, and I honestly, it was racing, rushing. <clears throat> it went on DXTL TV from the Touchlands, but it didn't go on to um, last night's show on SoundCloud. So if you're listening, listeners, total apologies. I'll be putting it on a little bit later. It'll have a few hours on the show, and unfortunately, um, not as many hours as this show will get as well, because this will go on, and I'll put that through, and I just know... You do make mistakes, and we talk about referees make mistakes, we talk about kids make mistakes, we all make mistakes, so we all have to get out of it our own way, but it's no good really pacing on the floor and stamping your feet. You've got to have that good attitude, and you've got to say, yeah, it's tiring, but it's not effortless. You have to put work in, and you have to make a difference, regardless of who you are, and you have to show loads of respect, respect, on and off the field of play as well. Because we've got sometimes irate parents, spectators, having a go at the referee, having a go at each other, and the kids are all listening to that. So don't cross the line as there to take away the verbal abuse, the aggressive behaviour, the racist comments and bullying on and off the field of play. And we don't want to stand for any bullying whatsoever within grassroots football. We don't. We really, really don't. We want everyone to work together and develop the kids the way they should be because it makes a difference to our kids on the streets as they get older, you know. 
And I talk to many, and they come to me, used to play for me, used to play games together, and everyone talks about when they play football and how they felt. And it does, it's memory, see. So you've got to remember that these kids have the memory, so anything that happens now, they'll always remember it. So if they have some bad episodes on and off the field of play, they'll always take that with them. Always take it, always look back at it, and always remember it when they become adults. And it, it, it's the case, we all do it, I do it, everyone does it. And you'll whole, always remember your bad memories, never your good ones. Well, you will, your good ones, you, you enjoy. But those bad memories will stick out like a sore thumb. You'll hate that, you'll always bring that up, and you won't want that to happen to your child, and you won't want it to happen in general, basically, to anyone else's, because it sticks. And it is bad, but I've got, I had a friendly atmosphere with all my kids, you know, and they've all grown up and respected towards me as well. Uh, some of them still call me gaffer and it's appreciated, I, I really do like that. And they've got the kids themselves and the, they're bringing the kids up with their good attitudes. And you know what? The kids haven't. They really, really do. And that's what we emphasise with Don't Cross the Line. Good attitudes. It makes a difference and it's great performance all around. And also... Good attitudes towards our referees makes a difference as well. Honestly, there's nothing wrong about passion within the game of football. We love it, I love it, and I love to see encouragement, and I love to see kids having a go, enjoying themselves, and giving a smile to everyone. It does, it's performance. But then they suddenly change as, as the game goes on, and there's different movements, different um, scenarios within the game, and you can see kids' attitudes changing. So you have to... Try and get that out of them. So they get upset if something's happening. If it, another child is not passing the ball to them, it, it, it's in their mind. You've got to try and take that away as to why and what we have to do. So we have to work on that when we bring them in on training and talk to them. But they're all hypo at the school. And I don't know whether you know it, but you know, if you've got under sevens, under eights, they've been in school Monday, Tuesday, and you've got a training day. It's like as if they want to let themselves go, let me free, and they run riot. And they're hard to control. And you can find that. You really can find it. So development is key. And attitudes as well. We have to bring that in. Get them to sit down and make a difference if we possibly can. But they'll always thank us for that. They'll realise when they get out of what we try to do. What we try to do to achieve their goal to help them. Because they don't realise that we are helping them improve their skills when they get older. But they do at a later date and you could say it's too late but I'm talking about the majority of kids I'm talking about the majority at all and well, not majority I should say minority because I look at some kids attitudes and the way they are and they talk to you and I was sitting there the other day when I went to training and a little child comes up to me with seven and you don't realise that many kids they, they take notice and they come up with you have you got training or have you got a football match tonight and I was looking I went you know talking with his mates and I just said, oh no, I'm here for the meeting. Got no training, got no football. What's yours? What are you doing? He said, oh, we just had a game and we enjoyed it, you know. And this is what I'm saying. Kids notice as well. And they come up in a friendly conversation. So if I was a, an angry coach, an angry manager, those kids would never have approached me. Not in a million years, because kids, oh, not going there then. They come over and they were talking and it was a nice, because you've got to have a good attitude with everyone. You've got to respect your fellow managers, your coaches, and the players on the field of play, and also the spectators and parents. And you've got to talk to them, not down to them, talk with them and talk together. And that's what we try and say to our team. Teamwork, it's positive. It makes a difference. The way, if you've got teamwork, it does improve your skills on the football field. Some parents, they can't get that into their heads. They just think, it's a game of football, it's a contact sport, get stuck in, score as many goals as you can. I'm not interested in you pass the ball, I just want you to perform. They forget about the teamwork. Teamwork is honestly essential. Okay, we're coming to the end of our show, hope you've enjoyed it. And if you've got any feedback to give me, mal at don'textaline.com. Don't forget what we say on every show, note this down, 6th and 7th of April, in your notebooks, in your writing pads, tell your kids, we've got to respect the referees, on that weekend, it's a national awareness weekend, but week in, week out, whenever you've got a game of football, you should be respecting the referee. 
on and off the field of play anyway. Thanks for tuning into the show. I'm Mal Lake. We'll be back again tomorrow evening around about five, seven o'clock. Good luck to Liverpool as we say tomorrow. I'm I'm all for it. Um anyway, put your feet up, relax, have a nice cup of tea, have a nice glass of wine, enjoy the weather, because it looks smashing. Yeah, it may rain later on, but what a weekend we have in in prospect, especially with the FA Cup water finals. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night, God bless.